So we're about to have a guest come on. Um, Kyle, why don't you go ahead and set it up for people who maybe didn't catch last week and who he is and why, why we asked him so to come on tonight. Everybody here, we've we've talked about him. Time in, time out. Guy is an awesome guy. He owns a local comic book shop here. He has a comic book shop. He has the comic book shopping network, which is nonstop people selling books. He used to sell new books, and it was mine and Brian's regular store for a long time. We, you know, anytime we went comic book hunting, you had a, definitely a foot rub, Jason, definitely. And uh, he was, it, Jesse's is always a stop. Jesse's always been on the fringe of what to sell, how to sell it, new ideas, innovation, great deals on books, and there's just a, a bleeding cool story just came out about him catching a lot of heat for selling comic books in this time. Like it's a bad thing. And, but I mean, the only way you're going to make it is if you sling books and you know what? It's awesome. It's even a shipping policy. It's like up to a short box for 11 bucks. The perfect way to answer this is, Jesse has always been about one thing, and that is making his customers happy. And if you're a customer of his, he's going to do everything he can to go out of his. He'll go out of his way to make you happy, give you what a you know what he says he can do for. A, he's just that type of person. So, I I think he was doing one of the best things you can this time is giving people you know some happiness, some good stuff. I think that bleeding cool article or the whole thing is ridiculous. So. Like what? How he puts it right now is he's all he's doing is giving people comic book therapy right now. Yes, amen. Getting comics to you that yes. it's that it's hard to get right now, and it's great. You know what? It's it's great. Not only does he bring in comic uh, store exclusives, he brings in fillers, and then after he's got fillers, he brings in heavy hitter books. There's no. There's, you know, he, there's no middle ground for him. He just, it's everything. It there's, there's, he doesn't focus on anything. And it's, and the cool thing about Jesse is he's, he's always thinking. He's always thinking outside the box. And I think that's why a lot of people in the community, as a whole comic book around, they look at him weird because he's, he's always thinking outside that box. Yes, I have this store, but how am I going to reach? Everybody, I want everybody to know Jesse James comics and know that they can get comics, and that's something that he's he's strived and he's worked hard for, and it's and he's done it. And you know what? He started. Everybody thought he was crazy. Hey, I'm Jesse. I'm going to stop selling new books. I'm only going to sell back issues. Nah, you're going to be done. But you know what? He's stronger than ever. Is uh, just, is he here yet? I, just, I he said nine oh five. So. Hopefully he had a show going on from eight to nine. Yeah, he just ended it, so so he should be wrapping up, and, and then I already sent him the link, so he should be jumping over. But it's you know, like you know, I've said it many times on the show. Some of the best books I've gotten are next to, from Chuck are from Jesse. Wow! Like Jesse's the place where you could go in. Hey, I like this book. All right, how about this price? Are you sure? You want me to keep it? No, sir. Because it's such a great deal. You, you, it's, you, you know, but you know, he, he's, he told me something one time that's awesome. He's like, I can do two things. I can sell you an overpriced book and you never come back. Or I could sell you a book for a great deal and make six times the amount of money off of you. Which one should I do? It's a no-brainer when you think about it like that. So, God damn it, Jesse. Well, he's he's here, so I'm going to go ahead and, and there we bring go. him in. <laughs> there he is. Oh! Yeah. We were going to talk about Tom Brady today. Yeah. Oh, wow. This isn't the Buccaneer fan club page? What What's going on? You found us. <laughs> you found us. <laughs> what's up, guys? How you doing, brother? Uh, we had just finished an amazing so show. Uh, we we sold a little over 400 books in the last two hours. Uh, so 
you know, it's a matter of just getting out there and uh, you got to sling and, and you, I think if you go out and you sell books, I think you're good to go in this day and age. So, yeah. You know what yeah, I was yeah. talking about before you came on, I was, you're out here at a time where a lot of comic book stores aren't even selling books. You're selling three times the amount that a normal comic book shop did during a good time. What is your philosophy for that? Like, well, just- I think the big thing, folks, yeah, the big thing that you want to remember right now that's going on is I got to make sure all my hands are going here. I'm Italian. I you got to see my hands. Which direction? <laughs> there we go. Uh, the, the big thing going on right now is you got to keep in mind, I've been doing this for two years. So this isn't like something I just came up with uh, pre-pandemic. And you also have to understand the biggest thing that's going on is the comic book industry and LCSs were in major trouble before this happened. And so I think the pandemic actually might have slowed down what was going on with five, six hundred stores that possibly could have gone out of business uh, just selling new issues. So what we decided to do was we decided to create a fan base that was comic eccentric, needed back issues. And it was a notion that we were then show them a plethora of stuff, anywhere from Elf Quest to Iron Man to Crash Dummies, which we sold tonight. Or last night, our number one seller was Black Belt Hamsters. Uh, so I was so mad that I didn't get that. Yeah, and now they make the announcements today with, with CyberFrog. But at the end of the day, I think the reason why we're so successful is because we said we were just going to sell comics. And if we sold dollar comics or two dollar comics or two hundred dollar comics we would be able to uh take care of all those orphan uh customers around the world that didn't have comic book stores now none of them have comic book stores so now we have this this uh network comic book shopping network which has 20 stores across the nation selling over ten thousand books a week folks ten thousand books a week no design books so imagine when new issues come back you have your back issue fans and then you have 17 stores selling new issues so i think why we're successful is we stayed on the positive side we're not one of those stores out there bashing people and bowling people uh listen when you're on bleeding cool and people are yelling at you for selling comic books i think you're doing a good thing yeah i couldn't have said it better i think uh that's it's funny when when people are giving you shit for doing what your customers want, you know. Um, so one of the things that we were talking about before this is how one of your your staples is the customer. You make the customer happy. That's the whole reason that you're doing this. You want the customer to come back. Um, we've talked about you on the show many a times uh, that we feel um, you're probably when it comes to customer service the best comic shop in the country one of the things that you did a couple of years back which was kind of surprising but um we see now what's going on is you took the step to decide to sell only back issues you weren't going to sell any new issues and people kind of went crazy about that um what were your feelings at the time when that was going on uh i woke up one day and i said listen we have 460 box holders our bill every week was eight eight thousand to ten thousand on a good small week. Uh, if we did exclusives, then you know that jumps up to the twelve thirteen thousand. Uh, so what we decided was basic business one hundred and one. I come from corporate, and I kind of said, "Listen, if I spend ten thousand dollars to make two thousand dollars." That doesn't even that doesn't even cover anything. But when I was buying a collection for a thousand dollars, I was making nine thousand dollars on it, at even the bare minimum of markups. So what it came down to was the basic concept of was I going to be a comic book store owner who uh, loved comics and sold books. Or was I then be a businessman who just sold comic books and made margins and turn rates and sell throughs and bottom lines and all the things that you use in business 101? And was it going to make sense? Me calling 460 people uh, to tell them I wasn't going to sell them anymore, trust me, was not an easy decision. But when you talk about customer service, we're the only store in the comic book industry history to win best practice awards for best customer service. Uh, how do 1400 store owners vote on a store that they've never been to 
and give them best customer service award. Well, they, it's because of our name and our reach and, and outreach and all that. On uh, eBay, we are the number one ranked store in the on eBay for customer service. We have 85,000 feedback. We have never had a neutral. We've never had a negative. Customers come first. Everybody that has been talking about anything. Yeah, exactly. Everything that has been talking about everything. Listen, I'll say it. I'm not afraid to say it. Brian Hibbs up in San Francisco, who goes with these long things, never ever, ever talks about com about their customers. It's ab all about them. So when people are making decisions and they're saying, well, then do this and you can't do this. And if you don't do this, it all comes down to, so you're not going to sell your customers new books. You're not going to sell them DC books or whatever books that, that they're charging at at that time. Customers want books. Let, let me tell you something real fast here, folks. Of, of 10 years or eight years carrying new issues, let's say we had over 700 box holders, nutritions, left, gone, all this stuff. I've never had someone walk up to me and say, hey, Jesse, before I open up this box, who do you get your DC comics from? It's, it's immaterial, folks. So I think going out there, selling your customers, listening, and making strong decisions. I knew I was going to be on an island. One thing I want to point out that when we left Diamond, we were the number one seller for every single independent publisher. We were selling over 1,200 Walking Deads a month, Rick and Morty's, all that Oni Press. So when we left, the number one selling store in the nation had left every independent seller, their number one seller gone. And so, listen, at the end of the day, I'm a very thick skinned person. I think you have to be thick skinned. And I think at the end, maybe two customers didn't understand why I left. I thought you were. Uh, but you other than that, business is business. You're lying. What are you messing <laughs> up for? What are you going to stop selling new comics? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So I have a question. You were, um, Jesse, um, you, you had mentioned your philosophy as far as, you know, for the people as far as your business. And, and, and I know college, like what a novel concept. Why do you think it's so hard? Because I'm sure we all have had experiences with comic stores that cater to the customers and then those that cater to the bottom line. And we all have experience with that. Why is it so hard for sports? that you would think that if this is the kind of culture you want to have and you're catering to your fans and, and, and the shared love of comics, that some can kind of see past that promote that love and, and and like you are you know doing it with the customer mind and really trying to look out for them while other stores are just about the money you can kind of see it from the jump why is that such i mean from your perspective as a store owner or operating a store why is that so hard to kind of manage for some well that that's probably the easiest question for me to answer listen i come from corporate sixty thousand employees nordstrom customer comes first no matter what you buy something at Macy's, you bring it back, you want a refund, I'm going to give you a refund, even though you didn't buy it from me. Here's the problem in our industry. How do you qualify to become a diamond account? You have a store with a lease, you have a tax resale license, and guess what? That's it. How are you paying? Cash, check, or charge? No one coaches you on how to do this business. So you go out there, you're getting your comics from Diamond, no one's sending you tutorials, no one's sitting down and saying, hey, Jesse, uh, a customer came in. Uh, listen, I'm the most secret shop store in history of Diamond. Uh, a traditional store gets shopped once a year. I got shopped every month. Why? Because they couldn't figure out how he was selling so many books. How, how There's no way he could be selling that many Walking Dead. Let's sit in the secret shop room. Listen, you treat everybody with kindness. So at the end of the day, the answer is no one's coaching these people. Uh, uh, you go into any job and they give you these guidelines and, and what their goals are and, and their mission statements. Uh, with with this industry, it's where's your rack then be and make sure you put your new issues on there, done. And so I think our job is to inspire, our job is co to coach, and our job is also to say, even though it's not my store, if I hear something, I'm going to call that guy and, and ask him if they need help and need maybe not even understand what good service is. Good service, and I always say this, isn't a handshake. Thank you for buying books from me. It's everything before that, and it's everything uh, after that. Uh, Cal, Brian will tell you, listen, I won best customer service. Why? Because I had a membership card that gave points to customers so they could get discounts when they hit $200. 
right? You got ten dollars off your purchase. I was on stage in Diamond uh, Diamond when I received that award, and they said a simple thing to me: "Where did you come up with this concept of the point system?" And I just laughed. I'm like, uh, "I didn't create this, but that's the industry we're in." I still have it. <laughs> it's yeah. very hard to to change an industry that's set in their ways like that. Um, with what's going on right now, do you think that with the pandemic and kind of how everything's happening right now with uh, online sales, do you think that, and with everything going on with Diamond, do you think that maybe we could see a change because of what's happening with this pandemic? Uh, well, you've already seen a change and the change is this, you got 70% of the store owners following four guys, four senior guys in the comic book industry who say, listen, we don't like this. So you can't do it. And so what happens is that 30% goes off. Well, we lost someone over on the top there. Uh, the 30 per, There you go. Uh, the 30% that are selling comic books are pushing and they're selling comics and they're doing this and they're doing that. And they're signing up with DC and, and Midtown and uh, uh, DCBS. And they, the only thing they're saying is, listen, we got to sell our customer comics. And then you got the other half saying, we're not going to sell DC comics unless Diamond sells them to us. So the change is very simple. Customers are going to remember two things. They're going to remember customers that took, or that stores that took care of them today, gave them great comic book therapy, uh, which is always our goal. Comic book therapy is the goal of, of any store. And then they're, but they're really going to remember the stores that said, I'm not going to sell you new issues. I'm not going to sell you DC comics because it's this or that. I wish people that made uh, these strong decisions and knew actual the, the, the laws, the rule of law on how to wholesale and distribute. So, at the end of the day, will um, these two new companies expand? Absolutely, they'll they'll break the monopoly. I can't say too much, but there's a third distributor coming out, and that's going to encompass a whole bunch of new changes as well. Listen, I don't care what happens. The only thing I know is that I need comics to sell my customers. I've been very loud about this. I will be carrying DC Comics. For a store that said he wasn't going to be carrying comics, I'm going to carry DC Comics. Why? Because several stores in our state has decided not to. And yep. we need to pr provide a service to our customers and get them their comics. So where, is there a change happening? It's already happened. But what happens is we got, it's kind of like the variant thing. Everybody, variants, variants, variants. But variants are only 2% of the overall business, right? But yeah. we make it sound like it's 98% of the business. And it's, so it's the same thing. So the changes happen. Listen, I'm not a guy that sits in and says, I did this and I did that. I always say we. And at the end of the day, I am where I'm at because the customer base has decided to support me around the world. Uh, and it's been an amazing ride that's just starting. Uh, I have fantastic allies. Uh, for someone that's left Diamond, I talk to almost every company every single week, except for Marvel. Well, I talk to DC now, so I don't talk to Marvel, but I talk to all the publishers every single week for two years straight now. And it's funny because, yeah, you left Diamond, but you you still have a relationship with Diamond, right? Right, yeah. My relationship with the Jeffies, I, I think, is second to none. I don't think anybody's ever said to me, oh, my gosh, that guy's going against the Jeppies. Uh, I talk to the Jeppies once every three, four days, uh, whether it's uh, just an email or Steve Jeppy actually watches my show on Comic Book Shopping Network, drives me nuts on the binge bar when he comes in and actually makes me sell stronger because he's in the, in the, in they're trying to get comic book therapy. He's done this 38 years. He wants to see someone selling dollar books and cool books that he sold uh, or back then. Uh, Union number one was our biggest seller today, uh, which is a 90s book that is, uh, uh, it's a uh, foil cover, which is hilarious that we sold out of those. But again, uh, to me, a new, a customer walks in, everything is new to them. If, if you haven't presented it to them, it's new to them. So the, the notion that new issues um, drive your business is actually, if you look at it as a, as a business sense, if I said new issues are predominantly the biggest part of the industry, you wouldn't know a thing about the industry because more back issues are sold than ever new issues. Then you take pre-pandemic, 
400 plus conventions that sell back issues. Plus, then you add eBay, then you add Amazon, then you add web pages, uh, stores open seven days a week, flea markets, uh, HH, uh, HA Heritage, uh, who's selling $20,000 million books. So in reality sense, the smallest part of the business, which only did $550 million, is new yeah. issues. Yeah, and and yeah. and here's the final point on that. That's five hundred and fifty million dollars sold at wholesale. So that's not even telling us. Okay, out of that five hundred and fifty million dollars, how many of that stuff was actually sold? Uh, yeah, it's probably sitting in in, in a lot yeah. of warehouses. Yeah, exactly. You t- listen, Gap, uh, Action One Thousand. Let's just say a million sold wholesale. I can tell you right now, every store has a ton in stock. So maybe only half a million sold. And, yeah. and so you got to keep in mind, I, I tell this to everybody, every store that comes to me to be mentored, I say, say a simple thing. We're the only industry that uses wholesale numbers as the reality numbers. If I walked into Blake Nordstrom's office and said, Blake, I just bought 5,000 LeBron James pink tennis shoes or sports shoes, whatever, uh, high tops. He would say to me, that is awesome. How many did we sell? Well, we haven't got them yet. He would say, get the hell out of my office. And when you get my money back, let me know. But in the comic book industry, sellouts are at wholesale. Doesn't yes. even- it doesn't make sense not at, mm. at all. Um, another thing that is so crazy is that when you stop selling back issues, I don't think your store saw a change in, I think you probably had more people coming to your store when, when you quit selling back issues because, and you prove. You mean new issues? The fact, well, new issues. Yeah, I get it. I oh, yeah, sorry, new issues. New, my bad. You no, prove the fact that back issues are what people want and what are people are buying. Um, I, you, like you said, you're selling more books than ever before and, and they're back issues. Um, what is there anything that could cause a major issues for instance if we see an issue where less comics are distributed is that a good thing is that a bad thing well the whole go- the whole goal is to sell comics uh so it doesn't matter if you have new issues in your store or back issues in your store keep in mind everything's about bottom line uh, margins and turn rates so if you buy something for a dollar and you sell it for three dollars that's a great thing but if you buy something at wholesale that's brand new that has shelf life of only one week because after a week it becomes a back issue and it becomes non valuable to someone who only collects new issues i i, I let me back up here the the word I'm going to say this, even though it's going to come out wrong for someone who's pro comic book, uh, uh, taking care of customers, uh, number one customer service is the, the worst thing that can happen is a customer walks in and says, Oh, I'm here for my pool box. You hand them the stuff and they say, okay, ring me up. It's the worst possible scenario a comic book store owner has that comic book store owner in reality sense, isn't making any money. So whether they go buy a soda or whether they go look in your dollar bins, uh, whatever it is, you have to add on to actually make that money when you're selling new issues. Also keep in mind, this is the the, the struggles that new issue uh, stores have. Let's say my bill is $2,000 and I get my $2,000 bill in the same day you get your invoice in and your invoice next week is 5,000. But wait a minute, I only got $2,000. So even if I sold that $2,000, that's only $4,000 selling 100% of everything. I'm $1,000 short. So you're always chasing them. Free comic book day comes where they charge you three weeks before. And it's like, these are free bucks. Why am I paying three weeks before? So we will always have an abundance of comic book stores. We will always have abundance of stores selling new issues and back issues. We'll have stores selling only new issues, stores selling back issues, and stores doing both. At the end of the day, it's going to come down to who buys the best, who's smart. I'll I'll give you a prime example. You want to sell to me, don't ever tell me about returnability. If I have to rely on returnability, that means that book's not good. You should have the confidence to say, you don't need returnability because you're going to buy 10 copies, you're going to sell out. Just don't buy more copies. You're telling someone it's returnable so they buy 20 copies and then you have to wait a month later to get your books back. You have to tear off the cover. Who's going to do that? So 
so at the end of the day, uh, comics are here forever. All right. And comics aren't going away. Uh, uh, I will tell you, I think some of the greatest things that have happened, comics going into Walmart, I think that's been fantastic. It expanded the comic base. It's expanded the customer to say, wow, $7, $8 for a buck. I'll grab that. They walk into a comic book store. They see the dollar bins or they see $3 books or new issues are only three ninety nine. So it expands that base. Digital comics. I think digital comics is one of the greatest gifts in the world because it tells us that we have to work stronger to keep our customer base to buy floppies. And so that's the challenge we have. People that fight digitals, tell that to their customer base. Don't tell them to the customer base. Tell them why they should have a real copy in their hand. And so I think all these things, you know, Midtown and, and DCBS distributing comics, who cares? Get the comics to the customer. And so I think that's that's kind of the answer in the end is comic books need to open up their doors. They need to sell comics and they need to look past the politics and they should only be looking at their customers as the answer to everything. Amen. So when, wow. you, when you decided, hey, I'm going to stop selling new books and I'm going to sell old books. I'm going to sell back issues. Were you like, you hadn't decided to even do them live like you do them now. So when you had made that decision, were you like, what you am can I just doing? say it, dude, just say that months before you told me to do live no. shows and I yeah. said to you, that's food wow. on by live. Just say it. No, 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 no. Right that's, not I, that's not what I was getting at. Tell him, Jesse. Tell him. I love it, Jesse. I love that's it. So funny. That's not what I was getting at, but I was like, were Pocket. you – I would say, were you actually nervous? Were you like, okay, how am I going to retain these customers? Are they going to come back? How am I going to get these books out here? I know I already sell on eBay. I know I already do a great job, but what am I going to do? Did, what I mean, like, I know you sat down with – all of these uh, like copy with comics and everybody else and you sat down with them and you were like what are we going to do but like how much planning went into what what are we going to do we're going to make this shopping network what hour like how much like how many meetings how, how, what all went into that so uh the creation and comic book shopping network was created three years in, in baltimore and i had just spoken on uh to all the store owners and all the publishers and and all that on stage, 1,200 people and uh, going over philosophies and literally saying the opposite of everything that I knew people wanted me to say because I come from a different egg and, and I sell differently. And so I wasn't that hold back. I also got to speak publicly uh, about uh, uh, customer service and uh, social networking at that time on Facebook, I think we're the third or second largest uh, Facebook page in on for comic book stores. I think we're fourth right now with 48,000 uh, with Secret Stash above us, Third Eye, and uh, I forgot who the third person is. There was one more person above us. Um, and so afterwards, I sat down and the person next to me was Jen King from Space Cadets. And we decided instead of going out to party and all that, we decided to talk. Now, keep in mind, I still carry new issues then. We decided to talk about what would what would we do if there was no new issues tomorrow? What would we do? And we said, well, how would we approach the customers? And Cal was coming in saying, you know, you got to try this live show stuff. And I really wasn't getting that. And so... I started watching shows and I started to realize, okay, that's kind of cool. And so one day, I guys don't even ask me this because I'm not going to tell you why. I was watching Home Shopping Network, all right? And uh, uh, this lady was selling this watch. watch regardless. Yeah, exactly. I was just climbing through and she was showing this watch. And, and I was watching the clicker and they started down to a thousand. This is the best watch we've ever had. It's black, gold, silver, made from elephants, tails, whatever it was. You know, and so they sell out and they sell out and whatever, about 30 minutes. So she goes, all right, we sold out. So she grabs the next item. This is this watch is the best watch we have ever sold in on our history of our show. And I'm thinking, but you just said that about the last watch. And all of a sudden I saw the numbers start going out and they sold out. And I said, well, why couldn't you do that in the comic book world? Our customers want to buy. Not every customer is going to go to a convention or have a comic book store. So when I when I set out 
and I talked to Jen King about this, we had two stores that would try this with us. And I started doing my shows, believe it or not, at 11 a.m. to 3 a.m. And that was our time slot. We didn't want to go against anybody. So mad forever. I think I told you this more than once that at that time, I was working construction. I had to get up at like four o'clock in the morning. And I was so pissed because I couldn't catch a show and buy a book. Yeah. It was yeah. mad. <laughs> and, and we were selling a thousand comics, 1200 comics. We were just talking about this today during those four hour periods. And so we started to explain, expand and we started talking to stores and trying to get them in the concept mode. And, and not everybody understood that concept. And so at the end of the day, uh, what happened was, uh, we started to get some traction. Uh, of course, I have a very big brand name. Me personally, I, mo most people know me. We started to build our customer base. We started to expand our store, stores. Uh, now we have uh, 40, 40 shows a week, 95 hours of uh, live shows during the week, over 10,000 books sold. But it, it just like anything else, you, 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 you go into something and you just don't think of anything negative and you let it fall off you and you push forward and you sell. Did we not understand shipping? We figured out shipping. Did we lose some people? We gained some people. And, and now we look at we're the biggest force in the comic book industry. Anybody wants to challenge me any right now, we'll, we'll compare numbers to numbers. And we will show you that when new issues come back, we have 17 stores on the Comic Book Shopping Network that sell new issues. There's no company out there that owns more than 10 stores. So it, it's brand building. It's understanding that you got to take chances. And the biggest thing is when someone tells you you can't do it, you do it better. Matt, yeah. can you share my screen real quick just so I can show the, the viewers uh, Jesse's page while we're talking? Yep. So another question. So when you went to these stores and these other people, like you said, you have, you know, you're selling tens of thousands of books. You went to all these people and were like, hey, I have this. What do you guys think? Was there convincing? Was there like, were you selling them or not, not just selling them, but just like telling it or they, or did you not have to tell them much? And you were, they were just like, fuck you. Yeah, I'm down to do this. This sounds great. Cause I mean, you've got a, but you know, you've got Jimmy J selling on there for uh, amazing con. Like he's him, he's yeah. on there selling books. And like, yeah, and we have, uh, sure. When you look at our lamb or our, 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 our family, our team on Comic Book Shopping Network, it's amazing. The the logos are up there. Coffin Comics, Brian Polito, and Third Eye, one of the top five stores in the nation, and Space Cadets. And you go through all these people. We have two grassroots uh, uh, stores on there that, uh, uh, listen, started from grassroots. They don't even have stores. They do it from their garage. And now they've moved into their rooms, you know, fun stuff. But at the end of the day, I don't think I've ever had to convince people to sell comics. Uh, what I had to do was convince people that we could sell comics. And if we could sell comics and create a bar that was accessible, I don't tell anybody to look at my show. I tell people don't watch my show. Uh, my show is if you're looking to do this and you're seeing someone selling 400 books in two hours, uh, that's probably not the show you want to set your standards on. You want to be able to look at the most basic shows and say, can I sell a hundred bucks. Can I do two hundred dollars in two hours? That's a hundred bucks an hour, and and so it's for shows to have that uh, accessibility, I think is great. Uh, it builds uh, a brand. It builds uh, how to speak to customers, being in front of them, talking to you know. Keep in mind, here's one prime thing that most folks don't know. Uh, you're watching a show right now. That number in the corner does not reflect how many customers are watching the show. When we have 60 people watching, that's 60 of my friends, uh, that number. My average show has anywhere from 500 to 700 viewers per show watching. That and so, in the corner is just that people that that's are friends. Your friend. That has nothing to do with your viewership. So... Uh, next time you guys come in, I'll show you the back end. You will be amazed at how many people actually watch our shows. So like, the goal is uh, to, so that's why when you kind of watch a show and someone says, oh, they got 160 viewers. I'm like, well, yeah, but they might have a thousand. But it really comes down to, are you selling books? 
Are you getting comics? My show is the binge bar. My show is set up as a bar. We have happy hour specials and and people come in and they talk about their families. You create community. uh, And and you, at the end of the day, when when I leave this, whatever, 10, 20 minutes ago, there's still four more hours of programming on Comic Book Shopping Network which is crazy. I think it'll go all the way one o'clock in the morning. Sunday is, we officially, Sunday start at 7 a.m. and we go to 1 a.m. All shows all day. What's crazy is you can watch a show and see the same person on every single show buying at least one item. Uh, Our retention is amazing. So at the end of the day, do I have to convince someone to come on Comic Book Shopping Network? Absolutely not. Uh, I, what was it, uh, five weeks ago, I talked to over 100 stores about how to do live shows. Never even pitched Comic Book Shopping Network to them. It's not my job to pitch Comic Book Shopping Network. My job is to get stores to survive and stay in business. The more stores out there, the less pressure it takes off me. Because listen, you guys know this, you get past 20 buyers in a show, you're basically screwed. You guys were on that show where I where I did five grand in in what ten minutes? Mm-hmm. I had to stop my show because <laughs> I, I had all the keys on there. And so this is a learning curve that happens per second per customer. Yep, I love the I love the fact um, uh, you you talk. Another thing that uh, I want to bring up that Jesse always talks about that I love is. He always talks about karma. One of the things that uh, I've learned from Jesse, um, he, he really believes in treating people well, and and if you treat others well, it'll come it'll come back on you two tenfold. You know, I've seen it and time and time and time, time and time again. Not not to stroke Jesse off on the show or anything, but, but no, I get it. no. We say this even when you're not on the show. Yeah, and and. and, and one of the things, you know, people say, well, he, he stopped selling uh, new issues. You know, he couldn't have thought, you know, da, 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 his customers must have been pissed. You know what he did for his customers that might have been selling book that might have been buying books? He s- set them up with other shops. Yeah. He was the first person to, to call the other shop. A lot of other shops here in this valley have great relations with ships with Jesse because I've seen people come in and um, ask for other shops and he'll sit there and name off every other shop in the Valley. Go here, go here. Um, which way do you live? Da, 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 da. He's always one of the first people to put um, you know, put out help for other shops. So if you are somebody that might be thinking about starting up a comic book uh, a shop here in the Valley or something, there's no better person to talk about than Jesse. On that topic, what do you suggest to people that might be thinking about opening a brick and mortar shop? Uh, I would suggest them going selling shoes. Uh, no, listen, at the end of the day, you would have to be crazy to open up a comic book shop. Uh, if, if I'm not going to, let me put, let me rephrase that. Would I do this again if I knew all this before? I probably wouldn't. And the reason why is no one's there to help you. And when you open up a franchise, I mean, you have guidelines that they literally say, if you don't follow these guidelines after a week, we'll just give you your money back, get out of here. And I think in the comic book world, you have to be thick skinned. You have to be able not to rely on anybody but yourself. And the people that do offer you help, like me, I'll help anybody in the nation. That doesn't mean I'm right on everything I tell you, but I will tell you the two things you have to do if you open up a store. You can't be married to your product and you can't be married to new product that comes in, oh. All right? That's, that's, that's the, yeah, that is the number one role in the comic book world. The wow. second role is this. I am an overstreet advisor. I am a senior overstreet advisor. That doesn't mean that I charge what the price guide says or what eBay says. What I charge is what the customer can afford so that they can buy more product. So if I do my show and people always laugh at me, oh, you, you should be doing $200 books. And I literally say, listen, your $200 book that you had on your show took you 20 minutes to so- sell. Within that 20 minutes, I've sold $300 books. So I've actually made more money than, for, than you and I've made more margins for you. So at the end of the day, I joke around, you know, I wouldn't open up a comic book shop. Now, in all reality, right now with 
be the worst time to sell it. But let's forget about the pandemic. If there was the pandemic, it's, it comes down to a simple thing. How you then do social and how you then do e-commerce. And if you can get those down, then it doesn't matter where your store is at. You could be, hey, listen, my original store was in the caddy corners of a mall that didn't have anything else in it but three stores. And I was the farthest back possible. Why? Because I, I, I sold to people across the world. So I think someone who's gained into the business has to know how to do those two factors first. Listen, I'm one of two stores ever to have an eBay exclusive with eBay who approached me to do Star Wars and uh, Power Rangers. All right. Why? Not because of my brick and mortar. It's because we our outreach to customers around the world was superb. And I think, so someone, because listen, there's not a comic book store owner, owner in the world who wasn't selling comics before they opened up the store, whether it was with eBay, trading with their friends or whatever it is. And what happens is you open up a store and you forget all about that. And so I will tell you, if you then open up a store, it's about set up your social networking now, set up your e-commerce now. That's the most important part. I have an 8,000 square foot store. Right now, my business, 98% of it comes from 100 square feet. Before the pandemic happened, 98% of, uh, of my business came from 100 square feet. So at the end of the day, listen, people come in, they pick up their, their product they want on the show, they come in, they shop, they spend more money. So it's, we, we have to do better than being just a destination store. We're not, I mean, Little Caesars delivers now. Someone finally said to Little Caesars, dude, imagine how much more money you would make if you delivered your $5 pizzas. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Right? Yep. Get the book to the people that want them. Yeah, exactly. Well, here's here's a prime example. And, I, and I've said this to everybody, and I'm not going to shy away from this. Uh, 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 a comic book fan is then go wherever the comic book is that he needs. He's loyal to a, sh a store until that store doesn't have what he needs, and that and you should you should celebrate that. I've called stores to ask them if they have it for customers. I have no fear. Let me tell you my philosophy real fast on this. Your customer will not know your service unless he shops someplace else. He will not learn to appreciate your service. He will not. Uh, he will not appreciate. Hey. People came into my stores, where's your long boxes? I don't have long boxes. I do everything uh, buffet style. It's all on the floor, not in order. Here's your stack of ROM. If you want ROM, go through that stack, whatever it is. Why? Because we knew people shop by taste, touch, fill, and this is what I had when I grew up. Uh, and so I just think at the end of the day, our job is to inspire our customers to buy more comics and to help them find comics when you don't have it. It's it's a very simple concept. Yep. Well, I, we appreciate you, man. I'm sorry. I, I think Jesse told me before that more than once that I needed a time card for a while. Yeah, sure. <laughs> yeah. Well, keep in mind, Wednesdays are a day where you know when a customer comes in. Oh, three o'clock. This person's in. Oh, this person comes in at 305, 310 to pick up their comics. Mm -hmm. Okay, that's kind of cool. But I want to be the guy that someone walks in on a Thursday night, 11 o'clock at night, just looking for comics. Uh, yes. That's the person yeah, that sends the that. most money. Yep. And it also creates uh, um, uh, the community. You have a real community aspect of your store. Um, on top of doing the comics, you also have something that just blew me away the last time i was in and your arcade is kick-ass man old yeah. school arcade all the kick-ass old school pinball machines some of the best pinball machines in the valley uh some of the best uh, old school arcade like i couldn't believe going in there and seeing some of those old school machines and then on top of that you you also have a great place for people who like the uh, um like a pokemon and, and magic Perfect. the gathering uh, you have a, a large uh, group of, of kids and, and people that love going to the store, being um, part of that group. So it's you've really created a community as uh, uh, even though 98 percent of your business is, you know, sold online. You have a great community aspect to your store, um, right. especially here in Arizona. Uh, worldwide. Yeah, I, I, I think uh, uh, a uh, community store should encompass 
uh, more than than just what people expect you to have. And by having you know forty five arcade machines in your pinball and Galaga and all this stuff, and and having gaming one of the largest gaming uh, stores in the nation uh, for Yu Gi Oh, Pokemon, Force of Will. Um, uh, it's an amazing thing. What you want to look for when you do your business is crossover. And crossover is very important. How do you cross people over from the kid playing Pokemon? Uh, he turns 16. He wants to, well, I want to go over to play Yu-Gi-Oh! Or he wants to buy his first comic book. Uh, dad's in the place waiting. So his dad sees something. Uh, so I think at the end of the day, uh, you create a community that surprises people when they come in. If someone walks in your store and says, wow, look at all the comics. Well, you better have them say, wow, look at all the comics, because that's what you are. You are a comic book store. So <laughs> I think uh, um, uh, give customers more than they expect uh, and continue to strive to do even more. Um, so will we surprise people that we will be carrying DC Comics? Sure, I'm sure we'll surprise people and all that. But at the end of the day, our goal is to sell them much more than just DC Comics. Do you have uh, anything coming up, uh, anything uh, super exciting uh, in the plans that you can share with us? Anything cool? Uh, we are doing something that not that hasn't been um, so told to the public yet. Uh, when we do it, we, we will let you guys know. Uh, trust me, we'll, we'll be on every single episode. What's going on? Nope, you're good. I just lost my face. I think he froze. Damn. Am I right. there? Okay. Oh, yeah, there he is. He's back. He's back. So I want okay, to back up a little so, bit. So, yeah, you there? I'm back. Oh, go ahead. Okay. So, uh, so, so what we are doing is every single website will be talking about what we're going to announce in about five days. Uh, it's the first time it's ever been done. Uh, we have a plethora of publishers doing this with us. Uh, uh, it deals with customer appreciation, has nothing to do with free time of the day. Uh, but I will tell you, we have big plans uh, that will blow people away. But at the end of the day, if we do not give back to the customers, uh, the comic book industry is screwed. And so we have decided to take time out of our time to do something that no one has even, is not even talking about. And so I think that's very important. I will challenge people watching this show to go to uh, Philip Sablick. He is the uh, vice president of Boom. Uh, he did a great thing about taking care of your customers today. Nothing in the background said Boom. He never mentioned Boom. Uh, the customers are, there's no other time in our history that the, con the consumer controls what happens in our future. They are going to make choices on do they spend money with comic book stores over the next five, six weeks. And I think it's very important that people know how to look at people that are trying to strive to sell comics and stay away from negativity versus the ones that are creating negativity. Uh, listen, I, I'll give you a prime example. And all of you know this, uh, everybody has bitched about Diamond for the last eight years. There needs to be someone new. There needs to be someone that won't lose comics or damage comics. Someone actually comes out to do a better job, potentially, and everybody's bitching about it. So you're not going to make comic book stores happy no matter what. Uh, so I think it's making these customers happy, letting them control our future. And if they control our future, I think we will be fine. Listen, I've bought 16 stores since I've been in Arizona. Uh, back in the day when there was 30 stores and every single customer that I or every single store I bought if they just took care of their customers and watched their bottom line they'd still be open mm -hmm. it's hard yep I have one random question real quick sure okay. that's not random it's gonna no. lead to the question yeah no no it really is okay earlier Jess you mentioned um one of the keys is, is not being too attached to your product um, either what you already have and also what you get in. Um, right. Has there been something for you personally at any point that you were like, I mean, you weren't attached, obviously, but you thought about for a second, was like, mm, like, I don't know now. Like, was there like one item for you that you may have like hesitated for just a moment that you were like, oh, that's pretty good? Well, I, I uh, about five years ago, I bought one of the largest collections of all time. 
uh, which was uh, every Marvel comic ever made uh, and every DC comic from 1959. So the answer is about 50,000 copies I wanted to buy. Uh, so, <laughs> yeah. yeah. So at, at the end of the day, during when I was carrying new issues, if I wanted something, I ran my credit card and I bought it. Uh, you, you, can't, you can't take candy out of your own candy uh, uh, shelf when you're trying to sell them for a profit. You have to put money back into the till for it. Can't get high from <laughs> supply. Exactly, exactly. And so I think every day it happens. Every day when we're showing a book, I actually stop and I say, oh my gosh. Uh, uh, here's a prime example. I started selling comics in a comic book store in 1982, folks. 1982 is when I was selling comics in a comic book store. Three weeks later, I was watching The Line for Jack Kirby. Um, when I wanted a book that we sold out of, I went to my eBay store. Well, in 1982, 1983, 1984, and 1985, there were no web pages. So what was my eBay store? My eBay store was the spinner rack at Circle K and 7-Eleven. That was my eBay store. And so I would go in and find the comics I needed. So we just have evolved. At the end of the day, we know the 16 million people that signed up for Netflix last month, guess what? There, when all this ends, they're not closing their 16 million accounts on Netflix. They're gonna say, wow, this is awesome streaming. So we're gonna lose some of that to that. And I think the same thing will happen in the comic book world, but it's about gaining people. And if you gain people, which is the best way to gain people is word of mouth, uh, keeping your brand out there, uh, um, staying on top of things, staying social. Listen, I'm live on the air, I think 24 hours a, a week solid the most viewed person in the industry as far as live shows go listen i'm going to say some stupid stuff i'm going to say some great stuff and i'm probably going to disagree with a whole bunch of people but at the end of the day i'm informing people uh and i understand my opinions are my opinions but my opinions come with facts and they come with real numbers all i know is if jesse james says buy that book you fucking buy that book yeah, I too yeah. that book at least. Yeah, well, here here's the thing: we've done over 277 exclusive store exclusives, the most in history of this this uh, well, in most history of the comic book world. Uh, that doesn't mean we know how to do exclusives. That just means that we are then go out there and we are going to. When Rick and Morty came out, guys, you guys know how much people gave me the biggest. How you what an idiot, Rick and Morty? Who does Rick and Morty exclusives? Bob Bur Bob's Burger, never heard of that. 11-piece connecting covers, Power Rangers, that's crazy. Shirtless Verified or number one, the fastest selling number one exclusive of all time. 500 copies sold out in less than two minutes. So at the end of the day, I can also tell you another castle. I bought 500 ago, 500 of those five years ago. I still got 497 copies. So at the end of the day, it's you got to get out there, folks. So my my thing to everybody is enjoy what you do uh and you know you got to get away turn off uh, listen turn off your phone stop watching the news read a comic and you'll be happy the greatest thing in the world is a, a comic book fan walking out your door with a bag full of comics there's nothing better than that amen and you can get them from jesse james comics that's for yep. sure comic book yep. shopping network yes yep. sir thank you jesse I got one yeah. quick question. Sure, yeah, sure. Before you leave. So, we had a discussion earlier today <laughs> about, okay, so, so Diamond's a distributor. DC is going to have a couple more. DC has printed some books again so that this uh, these other distributors can distribute books. Are those still first prints? Absolutely. So, so Diamond does not control FOCs. Uh, they control FOCs for Diamond, and that's it. They don't control FOCs for D DC. So DC has allowed many of us, and I will tell you, folks, these people are saying very few stores there, then be surprised. I know the numbers of MA stores are doing this. These stores have placed orders with DC. The printer are going to print these issues for them. Uh, so those are first prints. At the end of the day, you know how many people actually care if it's first print or second print? 1.5% to 2% of the people care if it's first print or second print. 
Most of them just want the comic to read. Most of them want consecutive issues. Most of them don't even know what second print means. So at the end of the day, uh, if people are looking at barcodes to see what number the barcode says, if it's first print or second print, they're probably not comic book fans. They're probably yeah. slingers, they're probably flippers. Uh, uh, listen, at the end of the day, it's it's all foobar. The guys there are saying, oh my gosh, this is a conflict of interest. That's why you have two different names for both companies so that there's no conflict of interest so that they could ship those books so you're not getting them from down uh, midtown you're getting from ucb and and lunar and so at the end of the day i think we have created conversations that don't matter to 98 percent of the people out there uh so at the end of the day i truly believe the winners of all this are um the winner of all this is going to be the bean counters, right? Because AT&T owns DC. AT&T is looking at DC saying, how do we make a profit? Oh, we don't have to pay 30% or whatever they pay to Diamond to ship our books. We can just go to a company and pay them a shipping charge fee for doing our job. So now our profit margins go up three, four times. And guess what? Bean counters look at... at uh, AT&T oh, and they'll right. make other decisions, right? Because it's about making money. And if I can save my company three, $4 million uh, 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 every quarter, and then I can bring in my other company and, and save another three, four point four five million dollars million, they then do this. Here's the bottom line, folks. DC Comics can talk directly to me. They can coach me. They can do whatever they want. They can send me extra product. If they send me a poster through Diamond, they have to pay Diamond a fee to send that free poster to me. Guess what? They can send it to me for free. Props, all this stuff, direct conversations, less shipping. Because guess what, folks? I'm not supposed to say this. I'm going to say it on your show right now. Diamond charges you per box, not per weight. You have 200 books in that box or you have $15, 15 books in that box. It's one price. Lunar, US, UCB. Uh, they are charging you per weight, which means you are going to save more money. And that's the that's the key uh, for any comic book store is to sell more and make more money. When I email DC or a Lunar or in my case, uh, UCB, I keep on calling all these different names, uh, uh, I get a response within a minute. And that's so awesome. that's very important to me. So keep your eyes peeled. But Try to think as a traditional comic book fan. Are a you traditional know the difference between Diamond, the book that Diamond sends you, and the book that one of these other companies sends you? No. And if, if there is a difference, I would say that would be a no-no. If you start messing around with your barcodes, uh, that or changes like, like paper everything. Or anything like that. Well, yeah, because listen, how, how are you then scan that book in? Are you telling me that... Uh, comic book database and all these things where they have two different barcodes to scan in that doesn't make any sense so at the end of the day if it traditionally is a second print it will say second print it will say two where it's supposed to say two I mean, cut but and dry. It, yeah cut and dry at the end of the day there shouldn't be listen i'm going to tell you this i've done this for a long time dc comics makes the announcement blindsides diamond Diamond immediately comes out and says, we are shipping books mid, mid May or at the end of May. And their next sentence is, but times can change. All right. So you got to read stuff. And if you read stuff and you understand they had to come out with this thing, they have no idea when books are then shipped. So all these stores that are waiting, there, all these other stores are getting their books weeks before these other stores. Customers just aren't going to wait. They're then go to the stores that have the books now. It's a necessity for them. When what? I used to, it's amazing how many people would be at our door at 9 a.m. in the morning to get their new issues because even though they had a pull box, for some reason they thought it would be sold out. I don't know how many times I called and I was like, you, you'd answer the phone, you'd go, hey, Kyle. I yeah. go, Hey, yes, yeah. that's in there. <laughs> I already put yeah. it in for you. Yeah, that's, exactly. Uh, so it's just knowing the customers. Yeah, you, you need to know your 460 pull box holders. 
uh, uh, just like you know, a new customer walking in and fill in and watching them and figuring out what to sell them to make them happy. So, uh, but at the end of the day, guys, I'm just going to tell you this: don't read into more than what is being said, other than reality, what is being done. That's the only thing that matters. And if you start reading into this futuristic stuff, you are going to be behind on the game. And, and it's about what is being done today. DC is selling comics. We've already placed our orders for three weeks out. We are happy. We got our Batman 92 first prints. We're happy. We're going to have all that great fun stuff. I don't care about the rest of what those other guys are doing. I just know that when I get my books, I'm promoting uh, socially in San Francisco, in states, New York, uh, that these customers aren't they have the ability. That's just being a salesperson. You got to go out there and you got to take care of customers. When those stores get the books, the loyal customers will buy those books from those customers. But at the end of the day, uh, a customer with books in their hand is a happy customer. I'm going to leave you on a final note. Okay. Most customers that buy in the comic book shopping network, the binge bar, don't even get their books for 30 days. Yet they're buying 200, 300, 400, 500 books from me in that amount of time. People want the confidence to know that they're eventually going to get their books. They can do their checklists and they want to buy more books. They don't want to read a story about negativity because that's immaterial to them. And so shows like yourself that foster goodness and foster collecting comics, uh, I think that's where uh, our victories are. Uh, choose your allies well. And um, and so that's pretty much all I got other than me losing my voice after three hours of talking at a fast pace. So. Well, how about you plug the shit out of your, your comic book shopping network for everybody? So everybody yeah. out there and then everybody out there on Monday who downloads us can know where to find you. Awesome. I appreciate that, guys. And and just a, a quick note about Comic Book Shopping Network. We have a 94% increase in viewership uh, over the last seven days. Uh, a national average for a store with women customers is 5%. We're at 13%. Uh, numbers that matter, uh, it's very important. 10,000 books a week. That's a lot of books to sell a week collectively uh, to people that have no idea what we're going to show. So, uh, um, so everybody, I really appreciate your time on here. Uh, this we got to get you back on in the future, man. We yeah. we appreciate you more than you'll ever know. And uh, yeah. uh, oh, thanks for being not only being to be on to talk about anything you want. Just let us know, and you've got carte blanche to come on and fucking yeah. talk you want. Sure. And, and and you know, and thanks for not only being a comic book you know store owner and and that, but thanks for being a mentor for us. We really appreciate it, brother. And uh, we'll catch you next time. You don't know how many times I've said, but Jesse says this, so this is what we're doing. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Alien bounty hunter, folks. Don't forget. Have a good night. Talk to you. Right. Thanks, Jesse. Bye. Okay.